Hi guys, it's Nancy Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, we're back with the wall. Oh, do you guys like this? Okay, this is my microwave right here. And I had, my husband is a huge snacker, okay? So those were all his damn snacks, okay? All those obscene amount of candy and snacks. Anyway, and I was like, that looks absolutely horrible. We just always keep putting snacks up here. At first, it was just a couple of things that looked fine. I looked at that in that picture. I was like, that looks horrific. Like, look, on top of my refrigerator, I have this nice little thing set up here. I had nice little vignettes, but on my microwave, I had all that crap up there. And so now I went ahead and put all this stuff up. I think that looks so much better. Anyway. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and finish this cabinet, this distress cabinet. If you didn't see part one of how we did the painting to get this distress look, go to part one or the video right before this. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I am going to do it like this. Okay, I, I kind of changed the order of how I'm doing things. But I'm going to go ahead and do my stenciling on here first. And then we'll do some distressing techniques to make this look really, really distressed and old. And I just think the painting technique itself makes it look really distressed. Isn't that cool? That's how it turned out. I think that looks really cool once it dried. And that's the thing, too, is don't keep messing with things too much because it does... Because this process, things drip and blend into each other, and then it dries. So it ends up better than you think it does most of the time. Okay, so I'm going to use this Cafe uh, Paris stencil, which you guys have seen me use this in my mixed media, in my art journal. And I love it. Okay, so let me go right here. And it says Cafe Paris. Okay. And I have a little, little bit of painter's tape that I'm putting there. Um... Let me grab, okay, remember I told you guys I'm using these brushes. These are for when you use um, the milk paint, which you guys know I'm going to be using milk paint here pretty soon. I just want to use some of this acrylic paint I have up, but I'm using the brushes that you use for milk painting. These are also good for stenciling, and I used to always use the makeup sponge, but when you want to get into little small areas like these, which we're going to do here in a minute, you can't do it successfully a lot of times. But if you use this, you can get into the little spots and do the script writing. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you. All right, so let me get some black paint. And I'm just using some um, crafting, just some crafter's black paint. Gosh darn it, come off of there. Just using like this. Oh, and I needed to let you know, the acrylic I'm using, um, on this back part, we're going to do another another distress technique on this, so it's not staying blue like that. There's another distress technique for that. But for this, I used Kills, K-I-L-T-Z, -I um, as a primer, which if you use milk paint, you don't need a primer. Um, this right here is a house paint that I bought. I bought it for like $5 a gallon. It's those Oops paints. Um, I also used two other paints. Let me just show you. I use these okay and this is just some paint that I got for a dollar 75 for this big old thing at Hobby Lobby last year on clearance and I'm use I use that blue and then I took this blue and I put a lot of white in it it's for excuse me for my third color so I use this this and then this with a little bit of white for my third color okay so I don't know if I explained it to you yesterday or not so I wanted to explain that and I probably shouldn't get that close on the camera okay I need to stand back. All right, so a little bit of paint on my brush. Sorry, <laughs> I have CNN on. <laughs> and y'all know it's very interesting right now on CNN on all the new shows, so I was watching that. And you guys, excuse me, I'm always wearing these big old shirts like this because these are my painting shirts, so that's why I'm not trying to look sloppy on camera. I usually wear something cute, but I don't wear cute things for painting, so I just wear big oversized shirts. Okay, here we go. I know people are like, stop talking and get to the painting part. I'm getting there. And I think it's worth taking an extra like 30 seconds to use some tape and tape your thing instead of just holding it. Some people are like, they don't, they're too impatient, they don't want to tape it up. But then I don't have, then it's easier because there's certain parts here where I need to hold it down and then I can hold it down. 
because you know it's a cabinet i have a little edging right here but i don't have to focus on trying to hold it up and hold it holding it make it flat where i need it to be flat at so that's just my opinion somebody else may be like you don't need to do that but in my opinion it makes it easier And these stencils, I absolutely love this stencil. Um, I got this stencil Tuesday morning. I probably paid two bucks for it. Um, I bought a bunch of these like Paris type of stencils. And I um, probably suggest go to Tuesday morning to get the cool stencils for a good price. They have stencils for like nothing there. I have so many stencils that I haven't really bought any lately. Well, that's not true. I bought an Andy Skinner and I actually paid $4 for it, which I never pay $4 for a stencil. But um, I really liked it, so I had to get it. I've seen some people uh, paint in nice clothes and I'm like, oh, I cannot do that. Oh, and who I learned these techniques from, these distress techniques, was from, I'm looking at my notes, Dionne Woods, who had to check her out, and you have to check out Debbie's Design Diary. Both of them do this type of distress type of work, and they do it on furniture, um, all kinds of like armoires, and so cool. And um, after I do my kitchen, after I distress the hell out of all these cabinets in my kitchen, um, I have, just like them, I go to thrift stores, garage sales, and I have all kinds, I have like three armoires that I want to do some distressing on, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to lift up this bottom just to see how this looks, and I love it, so I'm taking it off. And that's the other thing it lets you do. It lets you lift it up from the bottom so that if you don't like it, or not like it, if you don't, if you didn't get, get it, you know, all stenciled out, you can put it back down in the same spot and fill in if you need to fill in. So, yeah, look how cool that looks. Flipping fabulous. And we'll get close up on it in a second. You know what? I lied. Let's just get close on it right now. So just a second. Look how cool that looks. Okay. Sorry about my camera. I wanted to show you guys, so. Let's see if I should move my camera closer. Well, if I move it closer, well, for right now, we'll go right here. Because I want you to still see the top. I want you to still be able to see the top up there because we're going to do some distressing up there. But I'll bring it up closer and do a close-up again. Okay, so we did the stenciling that. Um, I'm just trying to think if I want to do some stenciling down here. No, just the top. Just that looks good. So now I'm going to uh, use my script stencil. Okay. And I'm going to do it so it's just here and there, not so it's like super even. I want it to just look like it's just peekabooing through, just like that. Okay? Again, I, got, I have another stencil that's really huge that I got from a uh, Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, I probably paid two bucks. This I probably paid 99 cents last year at Hobby Lobby. So just always be looking for uh, deals on these stencils and you'll find them. For those of you guys watch my mixed media videos when I work in my um, altered mixed media journal, I say the same things. I'm saying the same things I'm saying when I'm working on this door as I say um, in my videos because I just feel like this is an extension. This is like another art journal page, but it's my cabinet. I'm doing the same type of stuff, right? That's why when I saw these girls work, I'm like, oh my God, this is the same 
techniques I use a lot in my art journaling. Or if I do a, um, if I do a painting or something like that. It's the same thing. You're just taking it to your, um, you're just taking it to your cabinets. Which I think is super cool. Haphazard. I don't want it to look perfect at all. So it's just fading in and out. We're going to do a close up here in just a second so you guys can see. So you guys know in my art journal, I always use a script stamp. Um, I also use a script stencil, but I use that stamp a lot because I can just put it in the ink really quick and put it right on my page. Done. So let me, let me put my brush down. I'm going to put my brush in a baggie. This is a good thing. If you're going to use your brush maybe again, put it in a baggie and that way it doesn't dry out and you can use it later. And you guys, don't you love this? I have light. I should have done this yesterday. I know better than that, not to put extra light on my project. So we'll always be lit up from now on. Okay. So I'm going to take my camera again and show you guys. up close. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to come back. Sorry for the camera, but this way you guys get to see up close how it looks. I'm doing very detailed things that aren't going to show up far away. So, you know, I got to bring you closer in. But then at the same time, I'm working on this long door. So I need to um, set up so you guys can see the whole thing. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to do some distressing techniques. This is all almost dry now. Yeah. Perfect. That's why I love acrylic paint or even milk paint. It dries really quick too. Oh, really quick. Um, I was just looking at milk paints and stuff on, on YouTube and I ran into how to make milk paint. You guys, it's not even hard. You use dehydrated lime. I think it's lime because I just bought it. Just a second, let me see. Not dehydrated, you use, I think it's hydrated. Hopefully I got the right stuff. I'll let you guys know. I think it's hydrated lime. This cost me only three dollars, like nothing, at my um, at my um, home and garden center, uh, like my plant center where I buy plants and stuff at. So um, I got it there, three bucks for all that. And you just take. Um, I don't have the exact proportions, but I'll let you guys know when I make it and how I like it and all that. And I'll do a video on it. But you use skim milk at room temperature, vinegar at room temperature, you add a little bit of vinegar or lemon to the, um, to the milk at room temperature and then it curdles and then you strain it in a strainer in a, a muslin bag or cheesecloth, cheesecloth and, um, and you use all of the curds that are left and then you take those curds, you throw those in a bowl, you throw some pigment in the bowl and a little bit of water and stir it and that's how you make milk paint. It's that easy, I had no idea. Um, <clears throat> and it's all non-toxic pretty much for color. They're saying you can go to the, 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 um, you can, if you guys don't want to hear this part, just fast forward, but you could go to the, um, art supply store and buy pigments. Okay. At the art supply store, they want to like 20 to, I was, I thought, let me just do red, yellow, uh, red, yellow, and blue so I can make all the colors. Just buy my three primaries and I'll make all the colors from there. 
they want it for red, 30 bucks. I was like, so this one lady had said you can use um, you can use all natural things to form your pigments, like you can use blueberries, you know, like use the blueberry juice or whatever. Well, I thought, can you use tempera paints, but tempera powder? And they come in so many colors, you, for three, about 350, you get things about this big. So I'm gonna do that and I'll tell you guys how it works and you know, I'll paint something and we can see how it all works, so. Okay, let's get back to this though. All right. Um, what am I doing next? Distressing techniques. Here we go. Okay. Um, a lot of times I will take a fan brush with a little bit of white and put white on here and do this and then hit it with water. But because I started with a white base and last time over there I started with a blue base, there's already a lot of white coming up through this. So I'm not going to add any more white onto this. But a lot of times I'll do that. I'll take the white with the fan brush go like that so it's messy. I don't want it perfect and then I'll spray it with water and it'll drip down. But look how much nice white spaces I already got naturally when I did this because I started with the white base. So I don't need to use the white. <clears throat> um, all right. I'm trying to think if I want to do it like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take this, um, this dark, dark brown color because what I want to create, let me grab something else. I want to create like age, age and dirt and old. Okay. I want to, I want to grunge. So it's just like using like how I always use inks on my pages at the top and I let it run over my pages. So it gets real grungy. We want the count the counters to get real grungy. So, um, I'm going to take this dark, dark brown paint and that's the brand I'm using. Does it really matter? No, acrylic on my plate. I'm taking this little spatula thing right here. And I'm gonna go up here to the top. There you guys can see me. To the top of the corner and I'm gonna come out a little bit and come down. I'm gonna do that to the other side. And you don't need a lot of paint when you do that. So I'm gonna come in the corner like this and like this. I learned this from Deborah Woods. She always does this. She uses like a metal spatula, which I'm going to look, I have one, I'm sure, a metal scraper. It's like a putty knife to put putty on with. But I have these plastic ones and I love this little one, so I'm using this. Um, I'm going to throw some more dirt, like right here, just across, okay? All right, we're going to add more dirt here in a second. Um, you know, maybe scoot over because I think I'm too much in the way. All right, let me see now. Yeah, this is better. So what I did is I took the brown on here and I went up here. Let me make sure you guys can see. Yeah, I went to the corner. I went down like that and like that. And then I went down here and like that. And I just want to throw a little dirt up here. So I went across there. Okay, cool. You guys can see that. All right. And then I'm going to take my water bottle and I'm going to spray my water on here and we're probably going to manipulate it a little bit more but we're going to let this run and all the drips and runs looks awesome it's just like when you when i do my art journaling page and i let the ink drop all over everywhere to give it a more aged look it does that so i'm leaving that alone and i'm going to um i'll probably hit it with more water in a minute but i'm going to let it start dripping and doing its own thing um I'm going to hit some, where else do I want to do hit this dirt out? I'm going to throw some dirt. I want to throw dirt there. I'll throw some dirt under here. And let that drip down. Okay, at the top. See that? It with some water. Just a second. I'm going to look at my other. Oh, Excuse me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to throw some more dirt over here somewhere. Throw it right here. It's just little things like that. So, I don't even know if you can see that, but I just took some brown paint and I just, right here, just 
go like that. I'll do that right here too. Just throw some dirt on there, which is something but brown paint. But again, water and water. Okay. I throw a little extra water there, a little extra water there. So if you don't see it manipulating, um, the way you want it, throw some more water and you may want to take your, your spatula and just kind of go over it a little bit more. Um, just kind of drag it down a little bit more if it doesn't get exactly where you want as far. And you want the drips, like the brown drips that you see going, don't clean those up. You want the drips, okay? That's a part of this whole thing. You see these cool drips come down. It's awesome. So do not clean up your drips, okay? Um, I'm going to put a little bit more brown right here, and a little bit more right there, and kind of bend, and then drag it down a little bit, drag it down like that, drag this down. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use some water. ends up. Don't get too quickly about manipulating it. Let it <coughs> do its thing. <coughs> the next grungy thing I want to do is I'm going to take my this brush here, this little pointed brush, and I want to um, I'm going to take a little bit of water on this plate. Okay. And take a little bit of this brown paint. This brush needs to be wet. And I want to get it mucky, like right in through here. Okay, um, this is a little framing right here. It's like a little groove all the way around, okay, in the middle here. So I want to go into that groove and dirty the groove up. With a little bit of watered down paint so it doesn't look real. Um, the reason I, I watered it down is I don't want it to look like I painted it. I want to look like it got dirty. I messed up. And you really can't mess up. And it even left a little brown there after I just did that. <laughs> Perfect. I'm trying to get some grunge going, some dirt, right? can see that I need to manipulate a little bit of this paint up here at the top. A little bit more. I'm going to play with it a little bit more so it just spreads out a little bit more. So, more water. You really want to encourage those drips. I'm going to come up really close so you guys can see the drips I'm talking about. Okay. And see, you really want to encourage the drips. And that's that grunge at the bottom there. Okay? All right. Sorry if I'm making some of you crazy, but. I think it's important to see that. And it's all that small stuff like that that's gonna make your make it all look really, really cool. Um, there we go. Now we're really getting some good drips going down. We're getting some good 
dirt going down. Perfect. Now I have more of that brown just dripping all over here. And you definitely want to have um, some newspaper on the ground because it's a lot of, you know, drippage. But you just let it drip. I think it looks really cool. Really, really cool. Let's get some more dripping there. Awesome. Now I'm liking how it's dripping. Okay, um, what else do I need to do? Okay, next I want to do, um, okay, there's this Inca Gold, which I love. And they're Inca Golds, and they come in different colors. But this is Inca Gold in gold, okay? So I, not that that's um, aging, because the gold is kind of a chic part of it, but I love grunge, and then add a little gold on it. I just think it's awesome. So, that's what we're gonna do. So your Inca Golds don't dry out, keep a baby wipe in there. When they do dry out, you can just take uh, glycerin, put it in here, let the glycerin, and kind of like take a knife and kind of get the hard chunks up, throw the glycerin in there, let it sit for 20, 30 minutes, an hour, and then go back through and it, can come out, it comes out like that again, real nice and smooth, because this happened to this. And the glycerin will also, um, the glycerin will also um, stop it from um, growing mold, because it could grow moldy too. Okay, you guys, I'm at 25 minutes and my phone will cut, cut off. So I'll probably cut off, just go to the next part, okay? You know, what it does, it doesn't, my phone won't cut off, it just starts another video. So after 25 minutes, it starts another video. I don't know what the hell. So if that happens, just go to the next video. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of gold here. And I like using this fan brush when I do it. Because it just adds it really nicely. Um, a lot of times I'll spray that with water, like that gold I just put on, I'll spray it with water. But I have so much other brown stuff going. Um, I'm just going to spray, I'm just going to spray my feet, one of my fingers. Well, I'll spray my fingers in a sec. I'll spray my fingers and just kind of go over it a little bit, just so it looks really like, you know, like I didn't just put it on there. Um, let's do some up here. I think it's just, it just, I just love the contrast of like, you're seeing grunge and then you see gold. I just think it looks cool. You don't have to do this. Just my opinion. I think it looks cool. I think it can look really cool too. After in the little um, these crevices I was talking about, I put the brown in there to throw a little gold in there once it dries. In fact, I'm not even gonna wait for it to dry. I'm gonna throw a little gold in there now. In some of the areas that it has dried. Cool. Just wherever. Throw a little gold in there. Love it. And then we're gonna throw a little gold right here. We're gonna throw a little gold on the bottom here. Throw a little gold on top, right on the edge of the cup up here. Okay, that's probably enough gold. I could go crazy with this gold. Okay. I can get crazy with that gold. I could put that gold everywhere. I flip and love this gold. <laughs> now, um, I have, it's also wet, and I don't want to interrupt with my brown, um, with my brown um, paint that's dripping down everywhere because this will. Um, so I'm just going to take my finger if I need to, and just go over certain little areas just to blend them out a little bit if I think they need it. See, the rest of them I really like. Let me just. Pretty much like the way it looks. I don't need to go along. Yeah, I like them. So if they if they look if, if they're looking like too like you painted the gold on, you don't want that. But when you do it with the fan brush, it makes it look really natural, look like a like a real natural grow up gold stroke. And that's what I think <coughs> you want more. Okay. <coughs> Choking on my own spit. Let me go rinse this gold brush. I need this because we're going to do some splatters. Be right back. If you need to, just fast forward. I'll be back in just a second. I 
have like three or four fan brushes. I should have just brought my other fan brush. Oh, I did. Let me show you guys. Hello, here's the other fan brush. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna take my plate with the brown on there, that, that dark brown color that I had. And I suppose you could do it with black, but I just like this brown, so I'm gonna use brown. And I'm gonna, um, I think there's still enough paint on here. I'm going to um, just spray water here and get some inky, darky brown paint going that I can do splatters with. Just a second, is there paint on here? Yeah. All right. Just a second, guys. I have brushes here that I need to get into, um, into a jar of water before I have problems. Okay, let me again just spray the water onto my brown. Make this so we can throw some more dirt on here with my fan brush. Okay, that's why I do like this big old fan brush though, because I can really throw some nice splatters on here because this is a big piece, you know. So let's throw some dirt on here. Just flick my brush. My refrigerator is right next to this cabinet, so hopefully I don't put too much paint on my damn refrigerator. Just a minute. I do see that I put some splatters on my microwave. Just a second. I want to get them off right now <coughs> while I see it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want splatters on my microwave. All right. If I just get them off now, they won't be there. <laughs> Oh, this just looks so cool. Let me make sure that I have everything. Can I kind of write down like all the distressing tips I like to do? Okay, um, distress, distressing with that, distressing with the drips, uh, with the spatula, brown. Okay, brown slits, I did that. White, I'm not doing the white today. Gold drips. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is when, um, when I was watching Debbie, um, Debbie's Diary, or uh, Dion, um, what's her last name? Dion Woods. At the end, when they're done with their project, they always.